On today's Maker Mashup, we continue our series on Marlin commands and G-code. Welcome back to our series on Marlin commands and G-code. Today we're going to talk about heating and cooling, and then we're also going to talk about extrusion. We're going to cover heating up the nozzle and the bed, and then cooling everything off with the fans. We're also going to revisit our G0 command from our last video and talk about extrusion and retraction. So let's get to work. Before you start extruding filament, you'll need to know how to heat up the nozzle. Marlin, by default, will prevent you from performing what's called a cold extrusion. Cold extrusion is where you ask your 3D printer to extrude filament, but the nozzle is cold and it won't be able to melt the filament. A cold extrusion can cause damage to your hot end or your extruder, and this is why Marlin will reject G0 commands that tell your printer to extrude while your hot end is cold. If you ever see the message, cold extrusion prevented, Marlin has protected your printer from damaging cold extrusions. So to heat up your hot end, we will need the M104 or M109 commands. The difference is the M104 is considered a non-blocking command, which means Marlin will continue to process other commands and heat your nozzle up in the background. If you need to wait until the hot end is ready, you're going to want to use the M109. That's a blocking command, so Marlin will stop accepting and processing commands until your nozzle has reached the right temperature. This is super handy for startup scripts, so that way you can make sure everything is set to the right temperature before you end up proceeding. For the M104 command, you generally only need to pass one or two parameters, the most important of which is the S parameter for the temperature. You could also pass which hot end you want to heat up with the T parameter. For M109, it works the same way as M104, but you may want to use the R command. Now, the difference there is that the R command will wait for your hot end to heat up or for your hot end to cool. Now, this might be handy if you ever have a script where you've preheated your hot end to a specific temperature, and then you want to cool it down before you start printing. Now that we have our hot end warmed up, let's turn our attention to the heat bed. Not every printer has one, but most printers do. In a heat bed, you're going to want to use an M140 command to warm it up. Like M104, it's a non-blocking command, so it'll heat up in the background. If you use the M190, which is the blocking version, then that will wait until the heat bed is at the right temperature. Since there's only one heat bed, you're only going to have an S parameter. And for the blocking command, you'll have that R parameter. So that way it waits till it cools down to set the target temperature. So with that, you should know how to get things hot. So let's talk about cooling. Chances are your 3D printer has one or more fans. And in most cases, you can generally only control one of those fans, and that's the part cooling fan. Part cooling is important for bridging and layer adhesion. And there are times that you're probably going to want to turn that on or off manually or control its speed. The fan control is done with M106. M106 will allow you to set your fan speed, and you set it with that same S parameter. And it's generally a number between 0 and 255, and this controls what's called the duty cycle. The duty cycle causes your fan to run at different speeds. You could set that to, say, 255, and then your fan's running at 100%, or you can set that to 128, and the fan would be at 50%. This is helpful for controlling how much airflow is pushed through and also how much noise your fan makes. So you can lower that back and make your printer a little bit quieter. Slicers generally handle all of this at the first layer and in your prints. However, you may find that some prints require you to change the G-code directly. If your printer has multiple fans in it, you can control each one of those with the P parameter for which fan you do have the ability to control. So with heating and cooling behind us, let's talk about extrusion. Now we covered this in our last video, and extrusion is a linear move, just like we learned in our last video. Extrusion is pushing the filament from the extruder into the nozzle, and retraction is simply pulling that filament back so it relieves pressure from the nozzle. It won't create a vacuum or pull hot filament into the nozzle, but it does prevent what's called oozing. While 
it won't stop oozing. It does slow it down so you can move around the print bed. And if you've ever left on a hot nozzle, you've seen it, the filament ooze out. So let's talk about how we extrude that filament. To extrude, we simply send our G0 command with the E parameter and a positive number. So say E20. To retract the filament, we simply send our G0 command along with the E parameter and a negative number. So say E minus two. Now there are some specific G codes in the manual that deal with retraction and printing a bit better than G0, but we're not gonna go into those here. They are really the G10 and G11 commands, but they're only beneficial when you're really printing something. Manually or doing it in a script, G0 will work just fine for loading and unloading filament, priming your nozzle, or anything else that you wanna do manually with your printer. Okay, so let's jump into some examples here on how to make this all work. What we're gonna use is Pronterface, the same thing we used in our last video. So we're gonna start up here, we're gonna click our connect. And you can see here that Pronterface is reporting that we are online. So the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna do an example with the fan. Now the reason why we're gonna do the example with the fan first is because the fan, you really can't see anything happening here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna execute the fan command. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do an M106 and we're gonna set our fan level to 255. Now this is full fan and I'm not sure if you could hear this, but the fan now that is doing our part cooling is at 100%. So if we go in here and we change this now to an S128, I can barely hear that fan running now. So what we've done is we've taken this and we've gone from 100% down to 50%. So now if we wanna turn it off, we can go ahead and execute an M106. So we can go in here and do an M106 S0. That sets the duty cycle to zero, but there is a command that actually turns the fan off completely, and that is M107. Now, I didn't talk about M107 earlier because it just turns off the fan. There's really no parameters. It's a little hard to remember exactly what that command does. So you can use the M106 S0, but M107, the very next command, turns that fan off. So now that we've got that out of the way, Let's go ahead and heat up our nozzle. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna execute an M104, and then we're gonna set our temperature here to 200. And because that's a non-blocking command, we can go ahead and execute another command here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do an M190, and that is gonna go ahead and be a blocking command for our heat bed. And we're gonna go ahead and set that to 60 degrees. So when we execute that, you can see now in the corner here where the temperature is showing in Proner face, you can see the heater's on its way to 200 and the bed is on its way to 60 degrees Celsius. Now, I had this printer on shortly before, so the nice thing is, is that it won't take very long to heat up, but it gives me enough time to go ahead and illustrate exactly what a blocking command is. Now the blocking command, it's gonna take the command from us, but it's not gonna execute it. So let's go ahead and execute a G28 in our command window here. And you can see that would normally home our printer. And we talked about G28 in our last video. So we executed that G28 command and you can see that print head did not move at all. So we're almost there now with our heater and we're gonna go ahead and be at our temperature with our bed here in just a minute. And then you'll notice that the printer will automatically take off. It's gonna go ahead and say, all right, I'm at the temperature, what's the next command? And it's gonna say, hey, G28 is the very next command, so as soon as you're done heating up, go ahead and execute that command. Okay, so we're just coming up on 60, and the printer should go ahead and start homing. There it goes. So now our 3D printer has homed, and it's waiting for input. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and start doing some of our extrusion. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and execute our G0, 
And then we're going to move to x10, y10. And then we're going to move to z40. So what that's going to do then is execute all those commands at the same time, and it's going to plot a path to go to x10, y10, and z40 all at the same time. All right, so it didn't move very far from the home position, but the important thing is, is it moved far enough up that you can now see some extrusion. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put our printer into what's called relative mode. Now, if I was to leave this in the current mode, which is what's called absolute mode, the printer would go ahead and uh, treat your filament as one very, very long piece of filament. And what we want to do is be able to say extrude 10 millimeters, extrude 2 millimeters, extrude 5 millimeters. Now, if I wanted to do that otherwise, I would have to say extrude 10, then extrude 12, then extrude uh, 17. Yes, I can add. Um, so that's how I would have to treat it in absolute mode. Uh, in relative mode, and that's what we're going to do here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and execute um, the command to put this into relative mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back down to here, and we're going to go to our G91. And then we're going to execute that just by pressing Enter. And that's going to put everything into relative mode. So now, if I say extrude 10 millimeters, then 2 millimeters, it just extrudes 10 millimeters and 2 millimeters. So we're going to execute our G0, and we're going to extrude 10 millimeters. So we're going to do that, and we're going to set our feed rate, which is another thing that we haven't really talked about. 3D printers constantly change the feed rate when you use a slicer. They will set the different feed rates depending on what you've set up in your slicer. We're going to do this manually just so we can extrude this a little bit quicker than the default feed rates. So if I type that in, you can see there we had a little bit of filament come out there. And then what we're going to do is we're now going to tell it to extrude just two millimeters. So we probably won't see much here. Let me get that out of the way. And you can see it just extruded a very little bit amount. So that's how you do that extrusion to go ahead and have that in relative mode, and then you can extrude the amounts you want. Now, what we're going to do here is a small retraction of just one millimeter, and all that that did is relieve the pressure. So now the nozzle won't sit here and just ooze out filament that is all built up from that pressure of extrusion. Now, once we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and execute our G90. And what that G90 command is going to do is put everything back into absolute mode. And I'll cover the G0 and G90 commands in a later video. All right, so now that we've got that done, we can go ahead and move back to near our home position. So we're going to go to G0, X0, Y0. And then we're just going to have the... Uh, of the Z go to one millimeter. And the reason why is there's a little bit of filament there. So we don't want it to squish that onto the bed. So that's basically how you can go ahead and write custom scripts to extrude filament and retract it and also control things like your temperature and your fan on your 3D printer. So this brings up the end of our video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you mash that like button and don't forget to subscribe so you can see the future episodes of our Marlin commands and G codes. Thanks again for watching everybody and we'll see you next time.